Oh hey, how are you doing? Welcome back if you're one of my amazing subscribers and welcome if this is your first time checking out one of my videos. I'm Mark, I'm a professional artist, an art teacher and I release new videos like this every single Friday. And today there's a good chance I might teach you something. So this time I wanted to tackle something inspired by my students. Uh, my new students in particular, since that's usually something that most of them seem to struggle with at the beginning. And you might be having the same problem too. Who knows? Have you ever taken your painting or your, your drawing to a point where you would technically call it finished, but felt like there was something missing? Like, you know something could be improved to really make it pop and better capture the, the attention of other art lovers on the interwebs, but you just can't put your finger on it. Well... If that's you, and even if it isn't, keep watching to learn the couple of things that I personally do to crank up the wow factor. Things that you can try right away that should have a really big impact on the kind of overall appeal of your art. I gotta warn you though, your other art buddies might get pretty jealous when your art starts to get a lot more attention than theirs. Okay, so this is a topic that's very relevant to the vast majority of the people watching. So I decided to make this tutorial because I know five things that if you do them right now, apply them, you'll see results, positive results right away. Doesn't get much better than that for a YouTube tutorial. If you follow what I'm about to show you in the next couple minutes, your art will look better. And of course, as a result, attract people's attention online more effectively, which is essential if you want to grow your presence online and attract as many opportunities as possible. Now, I'm not about to tell you just to get good. Of course, that's obvious. What I'm talking about here are mostly presentation tricks that will make a huge difference when it comes to people stopping and staring at your art for a while and things that are surprisingly easy to do. It's just a matter of knowing them and applying that knowledge. Easy. We'll start with the tricks that require the least amount of skills first and uh, we'll ramp up as we go. First item on the checklist, backgrounds. So what I have here is what we'll be working on today. And of course, you know, this is a character, but it could be anything. It could be a prop, it could be an environment. Hell, it could even be a 3D model. Same applies all the time. Having your character kind of float in space like this never really looks that great. In this case, you know, I have a lot of colors. There's a lot of uh, complementary colors going on, exciting colors, saturated colors. So I'm starting from a point that's already not that bad. But for example, you know, if, we're, if you're working on art that's a little bit more geared towards you know like horror style for example where things are a lot darker well having a white background and a dark figure here is going to really make it hard for people to notice those details so i'm going to show you something that looks pretty good for a simple background now the first thing you want to do is really try to make your character pop from the background right so you don't want to have colors in the background that are too similar to what you have for your drawing. What tends to look pretty good for a background is something that's very desaturated, so something close to gray. And if you want to add a little bit of a tint to it, try to use a tint that is complementary to the overall colors that you have on your piece here. So if your piece is mostly, you know, if you have a lot of red, for example, I'll try to give your background a slight blue tint, but usually gray will look pretty good. Now, of course, that's kind of boring. It's just a flat color. So what you can do to make that background a little bit more interesting is to add a subtle horizon. So where the bottom of the piece is a little bit brighter and the top is a little bit darker. From there, if you know that your character is going to be pretty bright, then you'll want to go darker with your background and vice versa. So in my case, I'm going to have a lot of light in here. So I'm going to darken the background a lot more. All right, so already that's a lot better. It's still a pretty boring background, but without drawing anything, just kind of this subtle gradient it already looks a lot better. If you're fancy and you want to add a little bit more, maybe a little bit more texture in the background, what you could do is pop in a random photo, it really doesn't matter. It could be a painting, in this case it was one of my paintings, and, and blur the crap out of it. I made sure to desaturate it, and then we can do kind of a, you know, something similar. But this way, you get a little bit of a, a little bit something behind there. A little bit of texture, a suggestion of what, uh, what might be behind there. Next up in the list, values. So this is something that is really, really easy to do in a sense, but always comes back as a problem. So there are two, two main types of art that most of us will be, will be working on, either an illustration or concept art. Concept art is something like this, right, where we focus on the design more than anything else. There's no real background, 
There's no interaction with this character and other characters. There's no interaction with the character and anything else. We're really focused on design here. But when uh, we're talking about an illustration, then we'll have maybe, you know, a bunch of characters interacting together. There's a, an element of storytelling that's a little bit more present. Anyways, the values here will be applied slightly differently depending on what you're working on. But let's say, you know, in this case here, we're working on a concept. We really, really want to make sure that we can see every detail. So a lot of the time I'll review stuff that looks something like this maybe. Of course, I'm starting from a good a good place, right? So I'm not starting with a, a drawing that needs a lot of help, but that might not always be the case. And often I'll see things like this where you lose a lot of the details in here. All the details of the sword is kind of lost. And so always, always be mindful of your values for your concept art, making sure that we can appreciate the details and always, always make sure that your character pops from the background. You don't want the two to blend together. So always think of it as a character being in the foreground and the background being, well, in the background, hey. So the same will apply for an illustration. Everything that you have closer to the camera, closer to the viewer, like, uh, like this character here, you'll want uh, to use the full range of values at your disposition. This here, from pure black to pure white. And then for everything that's in the background, to make sure that the two planes here don't blend together, what you can use for the background instead is this range here. This simulates very roughly the presence of atmospheric perspective, which helps give the impression that your components are further back in a distance. Full value range for things in the foreground, limited value range for stuff that's further back. And of course, within your drawing itself, making sure that you don't lose your details, that things are not too dark. A good way to test it is to always zoom out here. So if you zoom out a lot and your character is a little bit too dark, maybe things will get a little bit hard to, to appreciate here. It's hard to know what's going on. So look at it from this distance. If you can still read all the details from a very small size like that, then you're probably good. If not, Try to increase your brightness so that we can really read everything even at the smallest size. All right, next, brush strokes. So this is something that basically you should avoid um, unless you know exactly what you're doing with this. So if we take a look at a different example because, uh, well, I didn't have any brush strokes in that drawing. Uh, so like an older painting that I did here, uh, you can see a lot of brush strokes in here, right? So very, very clearly all the brush strokes are visible. And this is a style choice more than anything else. So I wanted this to look rough. It's a look that I really, really like, but it's something that only really looks good if you have enough experience to pull it off. I'm not saying that this looks amazing. There's many, many things that I could improve in here, but in this case, the brush strokes don't impact the piece negatively. It just changes the style a little bit. And well, the main problem with that is that you get better managing your brush strokes as you build up experience. As you get better, you'll be able to use fewer brush strokes and accomplish more with them. I like to compare it to, to speed in art. You know, speed is a, a symptom almost of, of all your fundamentals kind of getting better. You can't really focus on speed alone. It's just a result of your other skills getting better. And your brush stroke management, that's really similar. But while it might look pretty good if a professional pulls it off, knowing what he's doing, when your management of brush strokes is not quite there yet, it tends to do the opposite. And it looks a little bit worse than it would have if you completely removed them. So what I highly recommend, if you're not 100% sure what you're doing, use a soft brush to paint. And very quickly, this also applies to just your line quality. If to do a simple line like this, you have to go and do a bunch of smaller lines, what I like to call hairy lines, this will look more amateur. This looks more confident and as a result looks uh, a lot more professional. So as I said, your brush strokes is something that you'll you'll improve with time. Basically try to have, uh, try to make them not too visible unless you know what you're doing. In which case it can look pretty good. You know, in a way the same applies to my line art here. As you can see, it's it's still pretty rough. I haven't cleaned up anything. And this looks, uh, this looks worse than if it were a nice straight line, right? A nice continuous line. So this is the kind of stuff that you can, that you can look at. If you want to clean up your line arts a little bit more before moving on to the rest, brush strokes and your shading, be mindful of it. This really, really gives either a professional look or an amateur look, depending on how you handle it. Next, we're talking about the lights. So for a lot of you, I'm sure this would be a drawing that's, that's good to go, right? So it's, it's kind of done. There are colors, there's shading. And even in my case, I'd probably be okay posting this online. Well, as a matter of fact, I did. But there are still two tricks that if you can pull them off, will exponentially increase the appeal of your art. And that has to do with your lights. And we're about to check out next, your materials. Now, the main reason why lights always tend to look pretty good is because it's hard to do. If you can paint really, really good light, your drawing is going to look way better. So there you go, very quickly without light. 
with lights, I think it's pretty obvious that it makes a big difference. You can look at it again as a smaller thumbnail without width. Without width. Basically, the light adds contrasts. And contrasts in art, always more exciting for the eye and something that people are naturally drawn to. Oh, and real quick, I have a quick uh, trick for my lights layer. Something that looks really good, I think. So the reason why when I paint with full white, for example, the outside here, the outline is a little bit more yellowish. It looks really nice when you add a little bit of warmth, a little bit of saturation to those mid-tones here. So very quick way to do it is adding just inner glow to your lights layer. Lights layer is set to overlay mode, but when you add the inner, inner glow in here, you can see what it does to the outlines. Much nicer. It's kind of like warm, sunny glow. I think it looks really nice. And then finally, we're moving on to the last point here in our checklist, materials. So going back to contrast, right? Contrast in lights. Contrast in materials is also extremely important. And it really adds a crap ton of, of appeal to your art when you do it well. And it all has to do with how the light reflects on different surfaces. But basically what I'm trying to say is try to include multiple material. If your entire character is just made out of, of fabric, then you're only playing with one type of material. It's not that interesting. Now to that fabric, if you add a bunch of metal pieces that are highly reflective already, we're starting to get a lot more contrast in the materials. Having matte surfaces next to reflective surfaces always looks really good. Now, the good news is that I made a tutorial a while back explaining all about materials, going over all the logic, the, the physics behind materials and why certain surface will look one way or another and what you can do to achieve that look if you want to. So highly recommend you check that one out. I'll put a link to it in the top right corner here. Of course, in the description below as well. Now, once again, super rough, but you can look at the sword, for example. Now it has this uh, you know, somewhat reflective surface, reflective material, and it really contrasts nicely with the, the fabric that you have here. So materials, Try to have a bunch of them. Try to have a lot of contrast materials, shiny surfaces versus surfaces that are not shiny. And then finally, when we compare the two, before and after, of course, as I said before, you know, I made sure that the drawing was, was decent. So personally, I don't think it's day and night, the difference between the two, but objectively, this one here on the right has more going for it than the other one, right? When you look at it at a distance and a small thumbnail, and just technically, it seems a little bit more impressive which of course contributes to the fact that uh, its wow factor has now been increased. Of course, in my, in my case here, uh, you know, the one on the right here looks, looks pretty sketchy still. I would need to, to spend a decent amount of time here to polish things up, kind of going back to the brush strokes point here where you have a lot of, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, you can see the, the lines here. It's a little bit messy everywhere when you, uh, when you zoom in, but the more polish I would add on top of this, the more professional it will look. And it would be just simply doing everything that I've done so far, but spending a little bit more time and a little bit more effort on each single step. Now, as a quick reminder, I am offering my brushes here. Most of the brushes that I used in this case, so you can grab my starter brush set in the top right corner of the screen. Of course, links down in the description below as well. Tag me on social media if you end up uh, you know, using them. I always, always am super interested in checking out what you guys are working on. So don't be shy to tag me on Instagram or Twitter. Whenever I have time, I'll always try to repost or share your stuff in my stories. And last thing before we wrap up this tutorial, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe.